Admiral's log, date February 13th, 1930. I planned for a grand navy. Dozens and dozens of ships. These dreams turned out to be nothing but grandeur. The naval budget was not on par with my dreams. We have ten ships now. Three battleships, two battle cruisers, and five heavy cruisers. That's it. Three heavy cruisers have already distinguished themselves, however. The Admiral Scheer, Rhineland, and Furst Bismarck were able to sink one of the British battle cruisers, a heavy cruiser and a destroyer. The economic might of Great Britain is astounding. Thanks to our intelligence services, we were able to have a look at the designs of their heavy cruiser. These ships were able to reach an astounding 38.2 knots at top speed. Our engineers had a look at some of the requirements for such a design and were flabbergasted at the immense amount of horsepower the cruiser's engine must be putting out. Designing and building such a ship must have been an extremely costly enterprise. The same can be said for their destroyers. They can reach even greater speeds at 41.8 knots. The fact that the British squeezed such an amount of horsepower into such a small hull is impressive. Of course, there had to have been trade-offs. Neither the heavy cruiser nor the destroyer turned out to be very resistant to getting shot at. And, as it happens, my ships are extremely capable in that respect. The British might have the numbers and speed. We have Deutsches Solidität, and no amount of British speed can best that. Hey guys, Stealth here, welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It's episode 3 of the Germans' 1930s campaign, and I have just upgraded to version 1.01. .01. Now, this is um, a couple of recordings that I pre-recorded. So a couple of the vids, episodes uh, 1 and 2, were pre-recorded, which is why I'm only now actually getting into version 1.01. .01. Some notable differences. Um, there is an auto-avoid system now in formations. You can turn that on or off, and that allows your ships to automatically dodge torpedoes, so that's a hell of a boost. Aside from that, um, you get more likeliness to get big battles. You can unlock 1940s campaigns. You can rename ships in their fleets. You can get uh, victory points to show properly for when doing battles against convoy ships. So that's another nice one, because that didn't quite show up in the, the results screen, and then the post-battle results screen on the world map, it did. Um, the AI of shipbuilding has been improved, supposedly, no longer building itself into bankruptcy. Because supposedly they were able to build ships um, without limits, and then the AI went, oh crap, uh, I'm running out of money. And they kind of worked themselves into a jam there. And another notable one is that now in custom battles, you can design both the enemy and your own ships, which will open up the way for all sorts of interesting clashes. In fact, the only feature that I'm still missing there is the ability to export ships, for example, to a Steam Workshop or something like that, so that I can download your ships and pit them against each other, and we can have a sort of a ship tournament. Anyway, I hope that that is going to come at some point in the future. Uh, currently, working on the German campaign, of course, I have a very nice monthly budget of 38 million. I'm not even sure where that suddenly came from. Um... Some of my ships are in being, but with that much money, I'm going to put them in sea control. Because this is such a vast amount of money that I want to make use of it. There, I still have 34 million. Uh, I think they also did something to the finances. Let's boost the crew training. 70%. I'm going to boost the transport fleet to max. And, um, well, with this much money, I might be interested in getting a few new ships. So, let's go with a couple of, let's see, could I get light cruisers? Could I get interesting light cruisers, that is? Modern light cruiser, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because the enemy has a ton of those destroyers, right? They had 40, 16 destroyers and 13 light cruisers. Oh, in that case, I think heavy cruisers are more likely to be useful. So, let's build a few more. What? Ship is overweight? No, it is not, actually. Huh. Okay. Well, we'll just copy the Nizer now design. Yeah, the ship is overweight. They balanced something. Or unbalanced something, and that causes my ship to have a malfunction. I think it might have had to do with the update to the four belt armor. 
because they changed something there and that's going to lead to potential issues. Okay, in that case, let's reduce sonar to sonar 2. And what else can I save on anti-torps? No. Barbettes? You could do barbette 1 or 3? What? Whoa, 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 whoa. <clears throat> okay. What is going on with my campaign? I guess we're down to minimum barbettes again. For some reason or another. I don't like that at all. Let's reduce your range. For weight offset is 7.2. Christ, that's a lot. Um, yeah. If you balance out the aft belt, then you can make this thing work. Balancing out the main belt doesn't seem to do that much, naturally. So I'm either going to have to move more weight to the stern, or just build a bigger aft belt. I guess that's currently the easiest way of balancing the ship out. Okay, fine. Um, we could potentially get more speed out of the ship, but... At four, oh, jeez, they also increased price. They're now 40.9 million. They were cheaper than that. Lovely. Still Cordite, still TNT4, yep. That's slightly too expensive. semi -auto loaders. It's too heavy. It is nice if I can get that. How am I going to make room for that? Uh, yeah, there. One more on the stern. The ship is a bit outbalanced. I got a 5 inch aft armor belt and a 3.5 inch fore armor belt. It's not stellar. But I now have a 24 second reload on these 9 inch guns which also makes them a bit more feasible when working with destroyers and light cruisers. Okay, so that's the Lipper class design. Let's uh, build a few of those. It's going to take me 16 months, so we'll be here a while. Anyway, what I brought you here for is the battle of the Thuringen versus Goliath. We are almost as heavy. They have 64 tons on me. Let's see if my long-range battleship build is going to work. Because this ship is designed to snipe. It's designed to go up against the enemy at long range. Short range is <clears throat> not stellar. Survivability there is somewhat reduced. Because I simply don't really have the armor profile for that. I have a decent main belt, a decent fore and aft belt, but I'm much more relying on the deck armor. Oh wow, 9% chance to hit already? Good grief, okay. And their battleship, is carrying only six guns, but they're 17 inch. This is a very sparsely decorated ship. Yeah, they got some six inch, some three inch, and some four inch. But the 17 inches must be Mark I? Something to that effect? They're not going to be that effective. Well, that's not strictly true. They're, they could be very effective. But the real question is, can you make those things hit? And can you make those things useful? Oh, Thuringen, you look fantastic shooting those shells off. I suppose their reload must be dramatic. Because my reload is, what, f yeah, 43 seconds. It's pretty damn good. 128 million. Even the 6-inch secondaries are in range. Damage to the secondary tower. Not bad. It's going to take me a while to identify this ship. Let's maintain just something like half sp or sorry, full speed. I do want to do a bit of maneuvering to make sure that I throw the enemy's profile or targeting profile off. I've been getting a lot of questions and comments saying, hey, you get way too aggressive with these battleship fights. At least I used to in the previous campaign. Why are you going so close to the enemy? Well, back in that era, I didn't have all of these long-range modifiers. I didn't have radar. I didn't have stereoscopic range finding. I didn't have guns of Mark III, I think. Um, and all of this stuff led me to having a ship that was just simply not really going to hit stuff. Aside from that, 
having ships fling shells at each other in that was the 1910s um, at a range of 10 to 12 kilometers you're just not likely to hit anything now in 1930 that is entirely different that's entirely different because i have already done a decent amount of damage against this battleship and the Thüringen simply doesn't really take that much damage at the moment that is if one of those 17 inch shells hits it is likely to pen let's see goliath can you actually do damage yes you can 27 percent chance to pen in reverse 21 i can pen bow and stern belts and i can do some damage to the superstructures but the turrets are too heavily armored the ship has standard bulkheads it costs 99 and a half million these are Mark... Oh, they're actually Mark IIs. Mark II 17-inch guns. Not Mark I, as I'd expected. Damage is 1,069. My damage is not nearly that much. It's 621. But I fire way faster, because they reload in 70 seconds, and I reload in my 42... Sorry, 43 seconds. They're crewed by cadets. You cramped quarters. No standard quarters. Okay. They got Coincidence Rangefinder 4. Now see, that's an odd choice. Because the Coincidence Rangefinder is something that benefits you if you're switching targets quite a lot. Which I sus suppose and suspect that the Goliath is not that likely to do. Because those 17-inch guns are not exactly a weapon system that you would use against something the likes of a heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, or let alone a DD. I mean, I've done it. In many custom battles, I've done it. But it's not necessarily ideal. 18% chance to hit. Conning Tower damaged. There goes your fire control, buddy. Your accuracy just dropped to 5.7%. Minus 15. If we can keep the battle going at this rate... Then the Goliath is going to be down. The Brits are going to be down one of their three, I think, battleships. And that means that sooner or later, the Thüringen might also start encountering heavy cruisers, light cruisers, and ideally the, well, the last battle cruiser that they have. Fire aboard the ship. If you look at the side profile of the ship here, it does look a bit peculiar. They got those 17-inch turrets sitting on barbettes, which are actually too small for them. The game accepts it, but it does look a bit like a bobblehead. It looks a bit odd. Chance to pen is going down quite a lot. Although, at this range... I think we're much more likely to start hitting the... Am I reading that right? The deck armor? Maybe. Standard bulkheads. Auxiliary engines. Uh, auxiliary 4. So they're pretty damn good at putting out fires. Okay. No hits, sadly. <clears throat> Their accuracy is back at 7.3%. I'm getting a bit too close. I'm operating at about 10 kilometers. Their rangefinder seems to work a little better at close range. Mine works better at long range. This is a sniper and I should treat it as such. I need to stay at range. How fast are you going? 22 and a half. Okay, I can perfectly engage at my range. I can dictate when and where we're going to fight. Not you. With a fire, I doubt that the HE is going to do that much. So far, I'm not really seeing it. Range, 10.8. Their accuracy is dropping to lower than 6%. Mine is sitting about 8.8. .8. Well, let's slow down a bit. There you go. Flooding on the bows. Two compartments were hit. Very good. Turn a bit more to star. Sorry, to port. Allow the bow, the bow guns to join the fight. 
80% buoyancy. They managed to stop that flooding pretty quick. Range, 11-1. It's a little better. Damage done, 896. Damage taken, 307. Pretty good. Let's keep this up. 15 inch versus 17 inch so far. Seems to be going the way of the 15 inch, but of course it's not that simple. It's not just saying the 15 inch guns are strictly better then. Because they're not. There is a place for 17 inch guns, but you need the firing platform to go with it. You need to have, I'd say, a heavily armored conning tower. You need to have a very good radar. They only have Gen 1, which, well, currently is the best that's available. Um, aside from that, having a, a, very li a very highly trained crew would be very beneficial for a ship like that. As well as using a stereoscopic 5 rangefinder, which I have on this ship. The Thüringen is, tech-wise, better than the Goliath. We have lost 10% of our structural integrity, but it shouldn't be that concerning. Because we're slowly but steadily taking the Goliath apart. Structural integrity is down to 67%. Their accuracy is... Oh, there goes more flooding. Their accuracy is about 6%, minus 16. I fire faster, I deliver more shells at accuracy. There goes the main tower. Their accuracy has dropped to 3%. And they're starting to turn away. We cannot have that. We're going to get you. The Goliath is probably done fighting. But I'm not done fighting the Goliath. How good is her aft deck? Two and a half inches. That's perfectly penable. We're going to give chase to this ship. And once again, because the Goliath is normally only doing 22.6 knots, and now only does 17.3, I can immediately dictate the range at which I want to fight. And I'm going to chase this guy down and do as much damage. I am considering not killing it, because putting a ship in dry dock is going to be expensive for the Brits. So there is something to be said for just letting it live. Their accuracy is 2.5%. Nice. <clears throat> Turingen, so far, even with cadet level crew, deadly ship. Imagine getting this to a veteran crew. Just a really high-end crew. That's going to make for an extremely dangerous ship. So it's going to take me a little bit of time to take the Goliath down. After a good deal more fighting, this is what is left of the Goliath. She has taken severe damage to her main tower, her secondary tower, her funnel. A secondary turret has been destroyed. The 17-inch guns have proven to be resilient, both to HE and AP shells. So they both have, uh, or they have the both turrets available. Um, well, I say that, and then immediately the A turret gets hit. They're down to 4% structural integrity and 26% buoyancy. The fight hasn't been difficult in the Thüringen. The ship still has 80% structural integrity. I think she never even sprung any kind of a leak. There were no floodings aboard the ship. And at this point, um, the only thing that I'm slightly concerned about is the remaining amount of shells, which is 108. But considering the poor state of the Goliath and just a little bit of HE damage more needed to sink her, I think that this will be the last that we see of this particular ship. Not the ship type. Because the Goliath is, I think, part of a class of three battleships. So they still have two more of them out there. The question is, after the beating that the Thüringen gave them, are they at all inclined to risk another one of these very expensive battleships? I hope that they are. But I also hope that they're going to do it in a more favorable fashion, at least for them. Otherwise, this is going to be a particularly quick war. In the sense that they'll be escorted by heavy cruisers, potentially a few destroyers. Just larger formations overall. Because these one-on-one -on -one battleship brawls, I quite like them. But when you have a sniper like I do, 
And something that really only does very well against battleships, or at least supposed to do well against battleships like the Goliath. You don't really have a choice or a good opportunity to deal with secondary ships. Which could then make for a very interesting element of a fight. They can sneak up and kill you with torpedoes, with overwhelming amounts of fires, with whatever options they have. So that was the Goliath. Worthy opponent, sad to see her go. Uh, her maintenance cost was 5.2 million a month. Mine is 6.7 million a month, and I'm fixing up mine. Um, what? I think that they also did something to the displacement of the battleships, because I displaced more than I can displace. So there is a bit going on there. They, oh, they too. <laughs> the Goliath also has the same issue. They're displacing about 500 tons more than they can officially displace. Oh well. Astounding victory over there. Very, very nicely done. So, we're bringing down the British to 38 ships. Let's see what happens next. We have a convoy. The Admiral Shear and the Rhineland, once again. Dealing with the Immortalite, the Crown Colony, and the Skirmisher, which are all reinforcing their transport fleet. Let's take these guys down, all the way over in the Irish Sea. Which means we've passed the North Sea. Either we dashed around Scotland, or right through the Channel. And then we're hitting them up in the Irish Sea. Okay, I'll take it. If this is what we're going to do, fine with me. Let's go and hit up a few convoy ships. Oh, wow, this is going to be absolute murder. Sadly, I'm still crewed by cadets. But even with cadets, accuracy is very nice. Much to the dismay of this lead transport ship. Which is immediately getting its head done in. Over there, I think we can see one of their escorts. Yeah, this is a heavy, is it not? Eight eight-inch guns. Yep. <clears throat> That's one of their transports down. The next one is soon to follow. But ideally, I would also take down their escorts. What's that? Two... Yeah, there were two light cruisers in the heavy, so you're the light cruiser, right? 12 7 inch guns. Torpedoes there and there. Yeah, so that really does make you the heavy cruiser. And that must be one of those heavy cruisers which can do 38 knots. Extremely fast, but not necessarily a great ship, because they prove to be very, very fragile. Oh, just look at how quickly the shear is taking these things out. This is just a little cruel. Firing almost a full salvo of 9-inch guns, or 9-inch shells, into a transport. Basically a death sentence. Another one down. Even the Wishart is damaged. Yeah, we're going to be done with these ships, probably before we take even something as... Oh, there we go. We have taken a hit on the Admiral Shear. Just hasn't been that deadly yet. Heavy Cruiser, 59% identification. Good. Okay, target the Eden next. Main target, Wishart. Wishart? I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. Wishart? If it was heart, I would expect H-E-A-R-T. At any rate, it's a, <laughs> it's a bit of a non-issue. Ship no longer exists. Let's do a premature course adjustment. Because I would rather not like to get torpedoed by these ships. And some of them do carry torpedoes. Even though we should still safely be mostly outside of their range. Oh, and by the way, here is the new Avoid Torpedoes button. The division leader will strictly follow your commands, and the rest of the ships will automatically avoid incoming torpedoes and then return back to the formation. This command is available only for divisions with at least two ships. So the Rhineland is now going to auto-dodge, and the Admiral Shear follows my commands. That's how this is going to work. Very good. Immortal Light, what's your torp range? 12.7. We are on the edge of their torpedo range. Okay. Speaking of. Speaking of. 
We should be fine. Holy crap. Rhineland, where are you going? I mean, I get that you don't want to run into these torpedoes. But these are the only ones we can see. But the Rhineland is already running. Despite not really... <laughs> <laughs> Not really being at risk of getting torpedoed at all. There's torpedoes there and there. I'd say the torpedo avo avoidance is working. Um, over time. It's working a bit too well. Can we take out the last of the transports? Just so I don't have to worry about that thing anymore. Come on. <clears throat> you got this. Three inch guns. Don't make me send a torpedo that way. And I'd also rather not have to turn the guns all the way around. Skirmisher and Crown Colony have launched their torpedoes. The Immortalite has not yet launched torpedoes. There you go. Mission accomplished. Yes, but... I want to sink some transports. Oh, sorry, some light cruisers. So that's the objective. We can probably easily pen these, so we're going to launch HE at them. If I remember correctly, yeah, they have very, very thin skin. Basically, any hit is going to cause a lot of damage. And with few bulkheads, they are very much at risk of sinking. Now, they just launched their starboard torps, if I recall. No, actually, they're port launchers. But, just to be safe, I'm going to keep dodging. I'm going to keep zigzagging. Nice hit. The start of the end of the skirmisher. The Immortalite still has not launched torpedoes. Torpedoes in the water. Where the fuck is the Rhineland going? The Rhineland is doing all sorts of evasive maneuvers, which are a bit over the top. Crown Colony just sent another torpedo my way. You know what? No, I do not want to push in. I am not interested in pushing in. Torpedoes in the water. Origin. Immortal light. Nice. Skirmisher is starting to flood. There's another torpedo in the water. We're going to turn back. Avoiding both these and those. The Rhineland is running. <laughs> uh, I think it's a massive improvement having the avoid torpedoes button. But the way that the ships are behaving now... Might need some fine-tuning. You know what? Just throw some torpedoes back at them. Oh shit, there's another torpedo here. Skirmisher at 9.394, Crown Colony at 8.8, Immortalite at 9.8. Okay. I'm just trying to keep a decent amount of range so that I have a lot of time to respond to torpedoes. Now, I know that my... Jesus, look at this turning circle. I know that my heavy cruisers have a fantastic turning circle. 300 meters. But, they don't do that turn... Well, they, they have a 300 meter turning circle at 21 knots. Oh, sorry, at 28 knots. At 21 knots, it's going to be less than that. But look at this. If I turn... Hard to port. 30 degrees left rudder. This is my turning circle. The Rhineland was doing something very, very different. It's like my ships suddenly have access to the AI's incredibly good torpedo dodging. Which, of course, is a benefit to my ships. Sure. But the way that the ships are going about it is slightly over the top. How good is your sonar? Sonar 2. Yeah, we're not going to hit that with a torpedo. Don't bother. <clears throat> There's another one out there. Also, the Rhineland was supposed to return to formation. It's not doing that. Normally, I would just dis... <clears throat> Normally, I would just disengage that ship from the formation and have her follow my orders. But considering the current state of events, I want to see just how weird that torpedo dodging ability of these ships can get. Look at this thing zigzag. Like, 
Do you have bow thrusters? Otherwise, you cannot convincingly, at almost full speed, make a turn like that. Absolutely not. Shit. There are a few more torpedoes in the water than I would hoped. Oh dear. Hard starboard. No, I'm going to eat that. That was entirely unnecessary. Sorry guys, I was too busy working at, or having a look at how fantastically well the Rhineland was at dodging torps. Much to the dismay of the Admiral Shear, of course. Whatever. There are a bunch more torpedoes coming my way. Increase to full speed. We're going to dodge that. That's the Crown Colony's last torpedo set. The Skirmisher still has two of them. But I'm not terribly con concerned with those. What I'm concerned with is the range between the Shear and the Rhineland. It means that I basically don't know what the ship is still doing. She's trying to target the heavy cruiser, but... Detach, come here. We've done a nice amount of damage to the Crown Colony, which can no longer defend itself without any kind of... Well, it can defend itself with 7-inch guns, sure. But that's about the extent of it. She doesn't have anything else. There's the torpedo spread from the Skirmisher. I doubt that we'll hit that at 15 kilometers, 16, 17 kilometers out. Yeah, the Crown Colony is basically dead. And then we can push into the Skirmisher without any kind of concern. Because she just dropped the last of her torpedoes. So let's close the distance, boost the accuracy, and finish that ship off. These light cruisers were not terribly expensive at 16 half, but, well, every light cruiser that's no longer harassing my transports is one less cruiser to worry about. Hello? Hello, Rhineland? Thank you. Whoa, what? What the fuck are you doing? Hold on. Do not avoid torpedoes. Split the div. What the shit is this thing doing? You're still going to get hit by torps at this rate. Look at it. I'm telling it to turn to port. It's just not responding. Fine. I'll treat it as a ship that's no longer reliable. The Crown Colony is flooding badly. For those of you considering uh, typing in the comments, go for AP. No, AP would overpen, doing less damage than high explosive. High explosive is fantastic when you know that you can already pen their armor with HE. Which, in this case, I know. It's easy. Torpedoes away from the shear. Skirmisher probably spots that instantly. Rhineland, what are you up to? Donuts. There you go. Skirmisher detected and evades. But she might not be able to evade all of them because she seems to be overcorrecting her turn. Yeah, she's dead. Okay, Rhineland. Would you like to be useful? Hello? Go there. Look at this thing. What sort of monkeys are commanding this ship? It is definitely still under the influence of the avoid torpedo system. <laughs> Heart starboard. All of a sudden, despite me ordering it that way, I'm not clicking it at, at all. Oh, this needs to get fixed. This is so frustrating to work with. This is something that needs to get fixed. Because this is a full health ship that's essentially out of this fight. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Maximum port turn. I don't know why. I don't see any torpedoes coming your way. What are you doing? You drunk idiot. Get your butt over here. Oh my god. Sometimes with this game, it's two steps forward, one step back. And sometimes it's one step forward and two steps back, like the Rhineland. Because yes, it dodged torpedoes like a pro, as opposed to my manual command over the shear. But now? What are you doing? Get over here. By my count, at this point, all the torpedoes should be gone. So the Rhineland should respond to commands normally. She has a fantastic sonar suite, so she'll see the torpedoes coming from very far away. But she put herself at 20 kilometers away from the shear. Because of those stupid maneuvers. <laughs> oh well, you know what? We're going to let the Immortalite live, because the shear cannot catch that. If that thing is... Do yeah, it's doing 37 knots. Never mind. It's fine. We got the convoy, we got the two light cruisers, and we had some fun with the torpedo dodging. Well, the Rhineland did, the Shear didn't. The Shear did 17,000 damage. The Rhineland did 5.6k. How did I end up with 37? How what? Okay, so this ship did do 5.6k damage. The shear, yeah, it adds up, but uh, for some reason I did 37,000 here. Not sure why. Okay. The game still needs a bit of work. <clears throat> Let's roll with that. So, victory has been achieved. Transports sank 104 victory points, so this is new. This was patched in. The British Empire did get 17 victory points for my idiocy at not dodging the torpedo because I was too busy looking at what the Rhineland was doing. But I did get a whole bunch of victory points. Now, I got a nice amount of money. Um, I'm just going to go to the next turn. Yep, here we go. Bigger battle. I'm going to tease this one for the next episode. We're going to look at the Bismarck, Hindenburg, Rhineland, and 11 of my transports against the Indomitable. Amphitrite, the Sutle, sorry, the Sutlej, uh, the Bonaventure, Cairo, and Lyra. It's going to be an interesting mission. So be sure to join me for the next one. Subscribe if you haven't already to immediately get notified of when the episode's coming up. And I shall see you then for the fight of the Bismarck.